Welcome into the Vestavia Hills City Schools podcast. I'm Whit McGee. And I'm Brooke Wedgworth. And we have our longtime friend of the show, Dr. Antonio Cooper, here with us today, too. Hello, sir. Hey, glad to be back. All right, so we are uh, recording this in the middle of October. So uh, November is right around the corner, and something that is very, very big that happens this time of year every year. So I have to ask you a very important question. Are you for or against daylight saving time, falling back to standard time? Well, first and foremost, you're right. November is coming up with some very hot, hot dates, which is my birth date. You know, oh, the most of course. popular um, holiday, national holiday. But I, I, day I am for daylight savings time because I like for it to fall back and, you know, get dark a little earlier. You know, I like it. I like it. Get to gaze at the stars. And okay. Still have a little bedtime. Well, you are you are for a uh, a four thirty p.m. sunset. I am for <laughs> it. I am for it. You know what? Because the sun's out early on your early morning runs. That's right. Well, that's a good point. There you go. Think about that, Brooke. Morning person. Same. I like I like that the sun's up when I get up in the morning, but I feel like then at five o'clock I'm ready to go to bed. So that's the hard part. I wish we could just mm. set the time and keep it the same. And stop the fall back and spring forward. So just oh. pick one. Yes, let's let's just stick with it. So you're saying something's wrong with the five o'clock bedtime? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I think that's where I'm at. Is just you know pick a lane, right? I mean, it's it's one or the other. I don't love the switching. Yes. Yeah, so because I feel like kids and pets tend to not they don't understand spring forward fall back right i mean they're they're on a pretty universal time so that that's pretty tough as a parent or if you have uh, any furry friends at your house justin davenport and hannah peterson are joining us over google meet from vestavia hills high school so i have to ask both of you the same question are you for or against uh the fall back to standard time i would say i'm actually against cuz i i don't like the 4:30 when it looks like you're ready to go to bed you know i like that extra daylight there I would agree. Um, being an athletic trainer and covering our sports, uh, I never get to leave school before the sun goes down. And then when I get home and my four-legged baby wants to go to the park, she doesn't understand why it's pitch black and we can't. <laughs> well, that's a, that's a good point. All good points, too. And it's a very controversial issue. Congress is talking about it. So... I don't know. We'll we'll see what happens. But uh, we, you are both with us today, Justin and Hannah, because you uh, you do we wear many hats at Vestavia Hills High School and in our school system. Uh, but among those, you are both teachers in our career and technical education uh, department. And what you teach is really really valuable, and it's something that's become a big topic of conversation in the Vestavia Hills community, particularly over the last few years. So um, we'd love for you just to start us off by by telling us your story as educators, so where you're from, how you got started as teachers, doing what you do now, how long you've been at it, and, um, and specifically anything you'd like to share about your current subjects that you teach. I have been teaching, this is my 10th year, this is actually my eighth year here at Vestavia Hills High School, and I actually kind of fell into career tech. Uh, I originally went to school for uh, social science. I was a history and government teacher, and then also career prep for my first few years. And then I got a job here at Vestavia Hills High School as a career prep teacher. And then once I got into the department teaching career prep, I started seeing all the other aspects and courses that are, were available. I kind of fell into career tech. Uh, you know, this is my uh, eighth year here at Vestavia Hills High School. I was originally teaching career prep. And then when I got into the department, I started seeing all the other courses such as, you know, financing, marketing and everything else. And then so that really got my interest there. And I went back to school, got my master's degree and everything in business education. And since then, uh, and my role has expanded. I went from career prep to now teaching cybersecurity, computer game and simulation. I still teach career prep but also entrepreneurship. So it really has expanded from uh, since joining the high school here. And um, I actually started out as an athletic trainer, not um, not a teacher. And I worked in minor league hockey for a few years and um, working with Canadians. I either had farm boys, boys or city boys. And I learned that I love um, the cha- the task at hand at creating analogies for my farm boys who didn't quite have as big of a um, education. And then talking at a different level with my city boys who had a higher level of education and um, just that intriguing uh, challenge of approaching 
how to explain things and decided I wanted to kind of get into education. And then um, I've been in education for 10 years, nine years at Vestavia. And six years ago, I had the blessing of meshing um, those two worlds and creating a sports medicine program where I get to teach what I'm most passionate about. And I don't think it gets any better than that. So you both mentioned what you teach or some of the classes that you teach, but I would love for you to tell our listeners a little bit more about that. So Justin, I know you teach several different courses, but you mentioned cybersecurity, entrepreneurship. So maybe tell people who aren't as familiar, what what do you learn in those classes? So what's involved? And then maybe your favorite part uh, of teaching some of those courses. Yeah, you know, cybersecurity, that is a growing field. I mean, if you just look at the industry, I mean, the jobs are continuing to increase there. And even our course, I mean, we have grown from one class a few years ago. Now we're offering two courses of that throughout the day. And again, it's continuing to grow. Uh, In that class there, students basically become cybersecurity experts. They get the train. You know, we use virtual machines and everything. And so they are looking at, you know, whether if it's personal security, uh, business security and all of the different aspects from there. And so, I mean, they're kind of getting hands on experience there. I mean, we're not, you know, cracking and breaking into computers and everywhere else, but they're actually learning how to go in there and solve you know, those jobs and, uh, you know, come up with solutions there. So they get to work together also. So it's kind of hands on experience on in cybersecurity. Uh, The other class that I teach is entrepreneurship, and that is a really growing class. Uh, This is our third year here. And this year I have 28 students in that class and it is really growing. And that's probably one of my favorite classes that I do teach because we work as teams throughout the entire year. Uh, the students, they come in, they start off with a problem. I ask them to come up with things that really bug them. We look at them, we can kind of compile lists, and then we form teams. And from that, they form businesses to try to solve those problems that they came up with. So along the way, we have guest speakers and uh, mentors from the community. If you're a local entrepreneur, you know, we'd love to have you to come in the class because we invite those because students learn from there. But along the way, you know, students, they're learning, learning about marketing, uh, getting feedback, sending out surveys to customers. And all the way, it works to the end of the school year where we have a final pitch day. And it's kind of like Shark Tank, the TV shows, when I tell people is the best way to explain it. The the students, they uh, have their final presentations in front of a panel of judges, and then the judges deliberate at the end of it and then vote for their uh, favorite team there. And then those teams do have a possible chance of going to nationals and competing for, you know, cash prizes or possible interest in their business if investors are interested in that. And Hannah, we know you work in the sports medicine area. So tell us just a little more about what your classes look like, what the students are doing and learning in those classes. And again, maybe your your favorite part of those. Well, our um, sports medicine program is three years, four courses. It starts at the sophomore level where um, they're learning foundations of health science. So like a quick history of healthcare, a lot of basic uh, medical terminology and an overview of anatomy and physiology. Uh, during that year, we have a lot of guest speakers come in to talk about different careers in the healthcare field because um, we want to we want our students to hear from those professionals so they can tell them all the ins and outs of things they just won't find on Google. Um, and then their junior year, they take sports medicine. They learn about um, emergency action plans. We start to get very hands-on with our learning in this junior year. Um, They learn a lot about injury evaluation, so they start learning the process to problem solving. Um, And their senior year, we take them through advanced sports medicine, where they start to now create problems based on the content that they've learned and then solve those problems with their partners and then vice versa. So essentially they're creating injuries because they've learned the ins and outs of them. And then they're um, evaluating injuries of their partners. Um, We're moving towards the space right now where they're going to start creating therapeutic plans. So it's just a really hands-on experience for them, learning spine boarding, learning splinting, taping. And then the biggest thing really is just the evaluation process um, because we spend a great deal of time learning how to approach problem solving. Um, In the spring semester of their senior year, they'll do a clinical internship where they spend about an hour and a half, three days out of the week with local healthcare providers. Um, And we try to make that a a big variety of healthcare professionals. So again, if anyone in the community would like to host our students in the morning, we would love to have that that input from our community uh, healthcare providers. Um, Ultimately, um, 
they walk away with a lot of content knowledge, but also time management skills and learning that difficult content with a lot of hands-on skills. One of my favorite things is really just seeing the confidence that they gain by the, the end of the three years with us, how confident they are in their skill set, how confident they are in presenting material that they've researched or created. Um, just seeing them blossom really is the, one of the biggest things. And one thing that's interesting to me, I don't know if it stood out to the two of you, but just listening to them talk about their courses is it's almost, you know, it's those skills that you both talked about. It's not really about the standards. It's those skills that they're learning, like the, um, I think you both mentioned like problem solving and um, the application. So it's, you know, we're starting with the problem, we're solving it, or we're creating a problem, solving it, coming up with a plan. And so even if students, you know, go on and don't even do something that's related in any of these fields, the skills that they're learning in these classes are really applicable to anything they choose to do in high school and beyond high school. So I think that's so crucial and why um, career and technical education is is so important for our students. Dr. Cooper, something that you know that we've been looking at recently here in our, our central office is data from our graduates and from our city as a whole that points to the value of programs like these. Uh, we have about... 90% give or take each year of our graduates from Vestavia Hills High School who will go directly into a four-year university after graduation. That leaves, you know, clo- about one in 10 who don't. Uh, and many of them are choosing to go into the workforce, directly into the workforce, using some of these skills like they've gained in these classes. But then at the same time, a lot of what they're learning in classes like Justin's and Hannah's classes are things that can also be used on the collegiate level. When you look at um, what our students are enrolling in in college, nearly half of them are going into a STEM-related field like healthcare or a business-related field of some kind, and that mirrors the community of Estavia Hills as a whole. If you look at um, census data on what people's occupations are, it's a lot of these things in healthcare, engineering, computer systems, business, sales, these these fundamental things that are so um, essential for so many different jobs. And, and Dr. Cooper, I know you've been looking at a, a lot of that data as well, and that's part of what we've been trying to do to spearhead growth, and, and not only growth, but also uh, just publicity of these programs as well. Sure, sure. Um, Ms. Wedgeworth hit the nail on the head with the skills that um, Mr. Davenport and Mrs. Peterson have spoken to as far as what they're covering with their students in the classroom. And yes, those skills are practical skills that can be used outside of the programs that they are um, offering at the high school. But And like you said, with those, those skills also help students who want to go straight into the workforce because they've developed the wherewithal and they have a knowledge base on how to solve problems and things of that nature. Um, But most importantly to the 90% that you spoke towards, um, those skills help them when they get away from their parents and they have to become responsible and and taking care and looking after themselves. They have to problem solve. They have to prioritize. They have to make sure when they're in their college courses as freshmen, sophomores, juniors, and seniors that they have those appropriate problem solving skills and coping skills to be able to work through the um, intense curriculum that they are um, aspiring towards as far as becoming a professional. And that's the unique part of our career and technical education programs is that that's how I would like for 100 percent of our students to view it. You know, it is an opportunity to gain some credentials and some experiences in some areas that should you want to postpone immediate enrollment into a post-secondary education. You can go right into the work fit, workforce and you have actual credentials behind you that will make you marketable to different um, companies and professions out there immediately upon graduation. Um, but also it helps you to understand what field you want to go to, go into when you go into college. I mean, because health science is broad, right? Um, engineering and um, entrepreneurship and cybersecurity, all of those are broad um, fields where, you know, there's a bunch of different ways that you can go in that. And I think a lot of times students, once they get into college, either they realize I don't want to be in this broad field or I've just jumped into some deep waters and I don't know where I want to go with it. Well, our career and technical education um, programs, what our teachers are doing is 
they're showing them all of the different areas that they can actually explore once they get into that. And they're doing it for free, right? They get to go home and talk to mom and dad after taking Mrs. Peterson's class or taking Mr. Davenport's class. They can go home and say, hey, I was exposed to these specific careers within um, the class that I'm taking, the course that I'm taking, and that can better inform what they want to drill it down to as far as their major when they get into college. That way they're more focused. They have those credentials um, that the teachers are preparing them for. They have that field-based experience. Um, both of them are speaking towards interaction with professionals, one via internships and the other one via mentors. Um, so they'll be able to have that on their back when they sign or when they walk across that stage and go into the college of their dreams. You know, they'll have that experience as well. So it's unique in that it benefits both the 90 and the 10 equally. So Hannah, I'm going to ask you first, um, what do you hope that students take away from your class? And you might even have something to share where, you know, you've seen that play out with the student who's gone on or, or they've even shared with you something that, they, that they've been able to use and apply in their future. Well, I beg my students when they leave here to reach out and always keep me up to date with what they have going on. And the greatest response I get from them is twofold. One, that things, the, the time management and their approach to class that they've learned throughout our program helps them in college. Like yesterday, I literally got a text message from one of our former students who said all of her friends in her anatomy and physiology class are struggling, but she feels so grateful to have the foundation that she has anatomy and physiology and then to build on that in a collegiate level. And so that's so beautiful. I'm so grateful that they feel so confident and so um, well equipped to take, to take on some of these more difficult classes in college because they got such a good foundation in, in high school. In addition to that, I get a lot of messages from some that have had to manage per emergencies in their personal life. And so when we go over emergency action plans and I, I throw them to the fire and give them so many random scenarios and I typically let them fail so that they can learn from those mistakes and they have learned this new appreci appreciation for failure so that when they find themselves in these terrifying situations, emotion is removed from that and they respond efficiently and appropriately. And then they can't wait to tell me about how it went afterwards. And that just brings me the greatest warmth, the greatest excitement, because we're not just helping them as students, we're helping them as human beings and citizens. Um, and Justin, same thing to you. So what what do you hope that students take away and maybe some, some cases where you've actually heard from them or seen what they've been able to apply? Yeah, just like Hannah said, you know, it's great to get an email back from a former student and they actually tell you, hey, we, what I'm doing right now in my college classes, I'm, I did in your class when I was at high school. And the things that I learned in your high, in the high school class, I'm carrying over now to the, high, the college level. So that always makes you feel really good there. But I think the main thing that carries over into a lot of the career tech classes and Hannah even mentioned some of them, is really like the problem solving and the collaboration skills. I don't think a lot of students really fully understand how to do that. And in our courses, they get that. I mean, they run into issues and problems uh, that they have to learn to solve. I mean, sometimes when one student does it one way, then you have another student that can come up with a solution doing it in another. So I think being in the career tech field here, you do get some of those trial and errors that you get to learn, but really just learning to problem solve. And then they can carry those skills of the problem solving that they've learned in our classes into other courses and then even into real life. Well, that is fantastic. And and uh, something that both of you mentioned uh, a moment ago is uh, the the desire to get more community partners involved, because it really sounds like uh, the more exposure that students have to these things in the real world and, and how they're applicable, even in our own community, in our own region, the better off they're going to be for that. I would love for you to share, if you can, uh, how folks can get in touch with you. What's the best way for them to, to connect uh, if they're interested in partnering with you and, and supporting your programs in some way, even if it's just the, the um, ex that experiential knowledge that, that you're wanting to expose students to? Yeah. And, you know, I teach cybersecurity, game design and entrepreneurship, and we love to have members from the community to come in. So, I mean, you can email me. My email address is davenportjd at vhcs.us, or I'm also on 
uh, X and Instagram. I post a lot of things from my class there, and its uh, username there is Davenport VHHS. And I, I got to give you a shout out too, Justin. Uh, folks need to be following you on social media just because uh, you, you're uh, constantly showing people what you're learning. I mean, even just individual units on a day to day basis, the skills that uh, so many of us had to pick up once we were on the job, <laughs> you know, out of out of necessity having to do this. These students are learning this in high school in your classroom. So you're you're a great follow on social media. Anna? And we are always looking for guest speakers that would like to talk about their profession and the journey it took for them to get there, but also for our clinical hosts um, who are open to hoping, uh, holding, hosting one student at a time for three days out of the week during the springtime in the morning. And you can reach out to me on my email is Peterson, P-E-T-E-R-S-O-N-H at V-H-C-S dot U-S. Um, and we have a Twitter, but I am not as great as Justin. I need to step up my game. He's making me a little bit jealous. So it is VH Health Science, and I'm going to take that challenge and do better moving forward. Well, the you know the thing that that y'all uh, share every year that gets a ton of social media traffic. Y'all know what I'm probably going to say is when your health science students get the scrubs. <laughs> the Vestavia Hills Rebel Scrubs, exclusive to those students. You have to have, have achieved a certain level in your in your program in order to even get those. Isn't that right? That is correct. So that is a big day. It's their first day of clinical rotation. So it's their first day with their big girl pants on, big boy pants on, and <laughs> headed out into the medical community um, to learn to be a sponge, but also to represent, you know, the hard work that it took for them to get to that 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 space. So they're very proud of their scrub day. Yes, those scrubs are extremely special <laughs> with so much so that I've been here now five years. Yep. And they haven't even been asked for my size. Oh, <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. Your, your Google inclusive. floor must have gotten lost in the email. <laughs> I, guess. Right. I guess it's cybersecurity, right, Justin? We need to oh, figure yeah. out what's going on with that. <laughs> right. Well, I have to say, I, I feel like every time we, we're talking to our teachers, it's, you know, fine arts or whatever it is, it's like I'm always jealous because of these opportunities that our kids have that we didn't have in high school. I'm like, That's this right. is amazing. Yes. I wish, which I'm thankful that our students and my own kids get these experiences. And for those of you who don't know, Dr. Cooper, um, who is our director of career and technical education has really um, continued to develop different pathways and look at opportunities to give our kids even more experiences. And so I'm thankful for that. And it's been really cool to watch that evolve even over the past few years. So I am jealous, but I'm also very excited that our students have teachers like you and have these experiences. So with that said, for our parents or maybe even students who are listening and they're like, I didn't really know about all this or there's tons of opportunities and I just don't even know where to start or what all is available for my student. Um, we now have an event that started last year where parents can get all kinds of information, and it's called Next Steps. And so, Dr. Cooper, just share a little bit with us about what those Next Steps events are and um, the upcoming dates for those. Sure. Thanks. Um, that's exactly why we created it, and that's why we simplified it and calling, calling it Next Steps. It's for our secondary parents of our secondary students, and it's for our secondary students just to learn what's next for me after I'm leaving 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th all the way to their senior year, what's what's next for me out there um, as far as the school system is concerned, knowing the programs that we have available at all um, four of our secondary campuses, as well as the programs that are available to our cooperating dual enrollment partners, um, which is University of Alabama, Auburn University, um, Jefferson State Community College, and Lawson State Community College. Um, they are present at um, both of those sessions where, where they'll be offering um, parent informational sessions where they can ask questions. Both of those sessions were jam-packed last year, um, standing room only, actually. And we'll also have our wonderful career and technical education teachers there as well as our um, gen ed teachers as far as the math, science, ELA, and social studies, and our foreign language teachers. And they really just open the books and talks about talk about their programs, talk about um, the steps if you want to take this class or if it, you want to get to this class by your senior year. These are the classes and courses that you need to take um, for all of our subject areas. And same with our dual enrollment partners. They talk about classes that you can take your sophomore year. 
Um, I know Jefferson State has a scholarship opportunity that all of our students qualify for where they receive a significant reduction in tuition uh, to the point of where some courses, I believe, will offer for free, um, just depending on what you partnered them with. So they will be there as well as the Academy of Craft Training to talk about their program that our students are loving and taking advantage of um, in droves. And so, yeah, that's that's our next steps night. So for those dates, um, the freshman campus will have their next steps night on November 16th, beginning at 6 o'clock. And um, the main campus will have their next steps night on November 30th, beginning at 5 o'clock. Hey, and last year was our first year, and I just want to give one piece of advice to parents. Get there early because the freshman campus, they were parking well beyond the softball field. It was well over 500 people on campus. Wow. And the high school had a nice participation um, as far as with there being a basketball game that day, too. It, we had a, quite a few people at the camp at the main campus specifically there for next steps. So that's your time to come out, parents, to learn more. And you feel free to look at our website. Um, we have a next steps tab there that has some of the information from last year, and we will be updating it with this year's information as we get closer to those dates. And I'm sure events like that have got to be really helpful for uh, both of you as teachers, Justin and Hannah, just to have the opportunity to talk with families and students. Yeah, you know, there's so many parents that come up to us when we're at Next Steps and events like this, and they're all like, we did not realize that these courses were available at the, the high school. And then some of them will you know, say, you know, hey, my student graduated last year and I didn't even realize, you know, that they could take these. So they're bringing in the younger uh, child into these courses as well. So it's a great opportunity for to learn what is really offered here at the main campus. Yeah, and those students, like like Mr. Davenport said, one of his classes went from one where we had, what, eight students in that class last year? Yeah, and now, last year we had eight students. This year we've got 28 students. 28 students wow. in the class. And, I mean, we can't attribute all of it to Next Steps, but parents found out that it, it took place, you know, via the presentations that the principals did as well as what, the, uh, what Mr. Davenport did. And, parents, this year you'll be able to learn about our newest program, which is our engineering program. Um, that we got off of the ground this year with a large participation rate at the freshman campus. Um, so you can come out to both of these nights to learn about the year two and year three course that we'll be offering at the main campus moving forward. Before we leave, I would love for both of our teachers to talk about their S- CTSOs um, and they'll explain that acronym and talk about the awesome things that they've been leading their students towards and the awards and accomplishments and just the experience that the students get as part of being a part of a CTSO and participating in your programs. I'm the, one of the advisors for FBLA, which is Future Business Leaders of America. And with that, you know, we have state competitions and then each year we take a group to nationals if they place in the state. So like this past year, I took a group to Atlanta. Uh, this year, we hope to get, to get the chance to go to Orlando to nationals again. And that's a great opportunity. They have uh, sessions for the students to network with others, learn about opportunities in these fields, uh, also from other college recruiters and things like that. Yeah, and I um, have the blessing of being able to leave HOSA, future medical professionals. Um, our group participates in community service in the fall and spring semesters, and then they also get to compete at a state level as well as a national level. Um, in our six years, we've had uh, five years in the top three and four of those years in first place in the state in sports medicine. Um, they also compete at a national level. Uh, we've made that appearance four times and have had winners uh, two times. But other than just the winning, the most exciting part about that is a one year young lady that we had last year, um, she gets very nervous, very anxious going into testing, going into anything that really creates much of a challenge. And she had focused and prepared so much for this. And last year when she came out of her second round of competition, she smiled from ear to ear and said, oh, I just killed that. And she was so proud of what she had done. It didn't matter where she placed. The confidence that she built in her skill set and who she is as a person was just huge. So we love to have these CTSOs attached to um, the programs that we teach. Well, it sounds very valuable. The career tech student organizations uh, that are out there just to uh, enhance uh, the opportunities for students and give them a, a sense of community at the same time. It's a wonderful thing. 
Justin Davenport, Hannah Peterson, thank you so much for joining us on the podcast today. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Dr. Cooper, thanks for joining us as always. Appreciate it when you stop by. Always appreciative of being a long-standing guest. And thank you for listening. We'll talk to you again soon.